This is from uh, ngacole.com, the history of tribal warfare in Nigeria. <laughs> the history of tribal warfare dates back centuries. The tribal visions in ancient Nigeria causes a lot of warfare between the different groups. Slave traded several hundred years ago. Um, Nigerian tribes fight amongst each other hundred years. Says competing tribes would capture tribal members from other areas to sell them to collect to the Europeans, collecting safe to bring back to the colonies. Mm. So, what you see here is that the slaves were being sold by the Ebos, and this is where the Uncle Toms come from, the Fulani scum. You understand what I'm saying? Now understand the different factions, understand how it works, understand why uh, some people are making bombs and throwing them at each other and crude oil and how people learn from each other's tactics and uh, you have to understand all these things and understand the bloodlines as well and understand, um, right now I'm trying to find you, you know, some pictures, you know, who the, who the bitches are. You know, speaking of the bitches, this is one of the one of the bitches right here. You know, one one of the bitches right here. This guy, he passed away. He caused a lot of damage. Yardua. Um, let's see what else can I give you here. You see, remember it starts with this guy, and it was the knowledge was being stolen, really by. Um, the Europeans, including the people in the Middle East, a lot of Middle Eastern people were starting to develop ideas, things like this. The Ismail line, okay? A lot of the Muslims, you know, the people who evolved into the Muslim tribes, the descendants of Ishmael. Remember I showed you about all that? Here is a map of African dictators. That's what I was looking for. You wouldn't believe how many fucking pictures I have in these folders. That's why I love the way these scumbags, you know, they try to <clears throat> they try to justify some of the surveillance they do on me and some of the um, you know interception of uh, cor electronic correspondence. They try to justify it by saying I say a lot of harsh things. I talk about building bombs. I talk about funding insurgents in Nigeria. I talk about being a member of the Crip Gang and things things that a lot of different agencies want to figure out more about. And I I say look I know that you're watching me and there's nothing I have that you want that you can find. I guarantee that, okay? So it's just annoying to me that, you know, for me to express myself that all these people are going to watch me. But anyway, if you look at where the dictators are, what country is left out of this picture? Nigeria. Remember I showed you the last one that Nigeria has the most cultures, the most empires. This is the key. If you're going to do anything in Africa, you'd have to do it in several places. One is the place historically that resists you the most, which is over here. What country is over here? Can't read it well that well. I can't read it that well either. But it's Somalia. This is Ethiopia, and then you have Djibouti and Eritrea on the uh, northeastern African side as well. And you have Sudan. Okay, so when I say the Eritreans, the Sudanese, and the Ethiopians were part of the Egyptian Empire, which was spreads all the way out here to the Middle East, and it spreads down here, it goes down here, it goes to here. Remember, it follows the Nile. The Egyptians want to run everything along the Nile, and the source of the Nile is important to them, so a lot of the, the original Egyptians migrated toward the source. They were more interested in the source of the power than in the trade routes. The trade routes were occupied by the Temple of Seti, who's interested in that kind of thing for his, you know, wicked ways. And a lot of the um, good guys, the Temple of Heru, you know, over here towards Sudan, Temple of, you know, I told you about the Valley of the Kings, and, you know, as you go up, and I'm not going to get all these structures, but yeah, most of the structures are down here until you get to the Giza up there, and then the Delta is above Giza. So, basically, the people who want to control the empire and who were tempted to invade were coming from here and the empire is really being ran from Thebes which is further down it's more um, I'd say it, it, well Thebes is by Esna for instance but you know it's above Esna and Esna is considered upper Egypt which is the bottom part of Egypt so we're talking lower into Africa so that's where it, you know that's where the headquarters of the many of the priest castes that ran Egypt and the center of Egypt was until uh, and then you have new key cities like Saqqara, and then, you know, of course, Akhenaten moves out to 
Armana in the desert, and then you have the Jews moving out to Israel over here, and you have the Hittites over here, and you have you know this the Arab tribes over here, you have Iran, you know Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan. As you go up to the Caucasus Mountains, you know by Pakistan and you know in Georgia and Russia and such. So. If you understand the whites were way over here in this white land, this had nothing to do with it. This would probably be more like Egypt. I mean, excuse me, Israel. And Israel would connect it, and the Red Sea would come between it. So, what you have here is, you know, and then over here you have Benin and Togo and Ivory Coast and, you know, Ghana, and then you go all the way up to, you know, uh, Sierra Leone over here, and etc. So, this is the West Africa. This is where all the Africans went. Who didn't go over here? So the ancient Egyptians either ended up here, in and basically either ended up in, in Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan, Nigeria, Chad, Niger. Okay, this this is where it ends really. Niger, Niger over here and Nigeria. We're talking about eastern Nigeria, northeastern Nigeria, is where um, a lot of the descendants were, and then they migrated to southeastern Nigeria. And the Arabs came, when, when I talk about the Fulani and the Yorubas, the trade routes down, you know, they fall the Sahara, and they have to do with Niger, and, you know, over here, and it reaches down here, right? These guys, they tapped into that trade route. And that, that's, of course, why you have Timbuktu in West Africa, because there was not just important centers in, in Egypt and Alexandria, and in, you know, the other Alexandria in, in Rome as well, but it was also um, an important center in Timbuktu over here. And remember the Lemba, they, they come down and they migrate down to South Africa, etc. I remember Nambia down in, um, so down in South, uh, Southern um, Africa, you have Nambia. Okay, basically you have Angola, and by Angola you have, uh, you know, what, 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 you know, Zaire and in Congo, you know, basically that's the old name for it. And you go on to, um, Nambia, see, I'm pretty sure this is Nambia, okay? Because you know how it ends, like, uh, right there? It should be under Angola, and, you know, I'm just not used to seeing it there. And South Africa should be below there, so it just looks a little weird the way they have slice. But anyway, so Nambia is where they found the the <clears throat> fossils. They're seven, six, 760 million years old. And Ethiopia is important, too, is where you have the Ethiopian Jews, and Amos 9, 7, Ethiopia in the Bible. And you have Sudan. Remember, Sudan was part of ancient Egypt. It was an empire that spread out from basically the source of the Nile, you know, in Uganda and Ethiopia and those areas. And you have them going all the way up here, right? So all these places like Rwanda and Uganda right next to each other, and these places are important because they're proximity to the Nile. And Sudan and Ethiopia's proximity to the source of the Egyptian knowledge, you know, the temple at Edfu, the temple at Abu Simbel, Lake Nasser, on and on, Aswan, these are the important parts, and then Thebes is above it, so it's, really you have, the way Egypt is laid out is that you have the important stuff down here, and then the, the center right about here is where they run it from, Then up here is basically the trade places and where they um, hold down the fort, you know, you have big old pyramids, you have um, forts also in other places to, to, to take some of the brunt too from invading armies, and the pyramids themselves are part of part, um, the forts. So they can migrate down to their ancestral land, or they can fight, and th that's the same thing the Igbos do. They can migrate further into Africa, to their ancestral land, or they can stay and fight. That's what was going on in the Civil War. And I'll end it right there. Thank you.